The nature-nurture controversy was at its most controversial during the 1930s up to the 1950s, but it occasionally rears its head even today when you have scientists arguing for one side or the other of the nature-nurture controversy. Let's examine the history of this debate. On one side you had the European ethologists. These are scientists who study animal behavior in the natural habitat, and they included Conrad Lorenz and Nico Tinbergen. On the other side of the nature-nurture controversy, you had American psychologists studying animal behavior in laboratories, John B. Watson and B.F. Skinner. Here I'm showing you the nature part of the controversy. For instance, imprinting in baby goslings as described by Conrad Lorenz. Here you can see Conrad Lorenz walking through a field being followed by several baby goslings. And this illustrates imprinting the fact that when a baby gosling hatches from the egg, it will then follow the first moving object that it sees. Usually that's going to be the mother goose, but in this case it happened to be Conrad Lorenz. And if separated from this, quote, mother object, the baby gosling will emit little distressed peeping calls until reunited. Now every baby gosling does this, it does not have to watch other goslings in order to behave this way. This is universal for the species. And so you can understand why ethologists like Conrad Lorenz would emphasize the nature or genetic inheritance part of the nature-nurture controversy. I'm also showing you a picture of a gray leg goose. Nico Tinbergen, another ethologist, described a very interesting behavior exhibited by this species of animal where we'll talk about the egg rolling behavior of the gray leg goose. Imagine a mother goose sitting on eggs in her nest and one of those eggs rolls out of the nest or it's pushed out by an ethologist. How does she retrieve her egg? Well, it's universal and stereotypical. Every female gray leg goose retrieves her egg in exactly this fashion. She'll waddle over to the egg, she'll lean over and she'll touch the egg with the bottom of her bill and then she will push it backwards until she can get it into the nest. And if you think about it, there are an infinite number of ways a female gray leg goose could retrieve her egg. She could do it with the top of her bill, she could kick it with her foot, she could push it with her wing. But no, every gray leg goose goes through this exact stereotypical pattern to put her eggs back into the nest. And again, because the behavior is universal for the species, every member of the species exhibits it, and here it's stereotypical where she is going through a series of behaviors, pushing that egg with the bottom of her bill, never having to see another goose behave this way in order to learn to do it, then the assumption is that there's a strong genetic component in the development of this behavior. And again, this is why the European ethologist emphasize nature or genetic inheritance in the nature-nurture controversy. On the other side of the controversy, you had American psychologists working in laboratories and studying learning in non-human animals. For instance, John B. Watson, B.F. Skinner, two names that we'll talk about under the topic of learning later on, worked with a variety of species of animals in laboratory environments. And here you're looking at a pigeon and it's in a box that will allow the animal to learn to peck a key light in order to receive food. And these were procedures that were used to learn about learning by American psychologists. And so, of course, they emphasized environment or nurture in the nature-nurture controversy.